finally and most audaciously. Given the extraordinarily xenophobic outlook of the Chinese court, they demanded the right to have an ambassador resident in Peking, thus finally realizing one of the central aims of the McCartney mission. Not surprisingly, the Qing court reacted in horror, and it was not until 1858, after British forces had seized Canton, sailed north, and were poised at Tientsin, ready to invade Peking, that they capitulated. Residence of a foreign ambassador in the nation's capital was, however, intolerable. The refusal to give in to this stipulation led to further fighting, during which several foreign negotiators were held hostage and killed. British and French troops then marched on Peking, where they looted and sacked the Yuan Ming Yuan, the exquisite palace compound to the northwest of the city. With the emperor in hiding in the old Qing homeland of Manchuria and barbarian troops contaminating the very heart of the celestial empire, China was crushed and humiliated. It is difficult to imagine that China could be brought yet lower, yet by the end of the century she had fought two more major wars against foreign governments, both of which were attempts to reassert a waning hold on countries that had previously acknowledged Chinese suzerainty. The Sino-French War, which ended with a negotiated settlement in 1885, was a reaction against growing French influence in Annam, Vietnam, while the Sino-Japanese War of 1895, which ended in the total defeat of China's army and navy at the hands of Japan's recently restructured military machine, was a vain attempt to counter Japan's growing influence in Korea. In China proper, foreign spheres of influence now stretched around the entire coast of the country and reached inland along the Yangtze as far as Chongqing, 700 miles upriver from Shanghai. Foreign nationals, exempt from Chinese law, lived in concessions in over twenty-five cities, and missionaries were free to preach their alien religion throughout the land. The failure of the Qing government to deal with external threats, coupled with a huge rise in popular opposition, had portentous significance. To many Chinese with an understanding of their own history, events of the 19th century must have unfolded in a way that echoed all too closely the patterns of dynastic succession, the defining feature of the Chinese historical process from the second millennium BC. Dynamic and reforming at first, as the great Qing emperors Kangxi and Qianlong had been in their time, Subsequent emperors of a new dynasty, stifled by their court upbringing, became effete and impotent, descending into a world of palace intrigue and decadence. As they ignored more and more the affairs of state, and popular unrest fermented in the countryside, the dynasty lost its right to rule, the Tianming, or Mandate of Heaven, and were challenged and overthrown. And so the cycle began again. Discounting the period during which the Qing consolidated their control over China in the second half of the 17th century, serious antipathy to the new regime was not seen on a threatening scale until the White Lotus Rebellion of the 1790s. This uprising, which was committed to the overthrow of the Manchu rulers and the reinstatement of the Ming, the dynasty which the Qing had itself overthrown in 1644, was finally suppressed in 1804, though White Lotus ideals were kept alive, finding a new lease of life later in the century in the Boxer movement. Whilst certainly a destabilizing factor, the havoc wreaked by the White Lotus sect did not have the cataclysmic potential of two rebellions which erupted in the mid-nineteenth century, both of which could have brought down the Qing state. Mainly fueled by the desperation caused as a result of years of famine and the chaos that ensued when the Yellow River changed course in 1851, the Nian Rebellion raged for 17 years in central China before it was eventually quelled by government troops. An even more serious threat began in the same year when Hong Xiaquan's Taiping Rebellion swept like wildfire through southern China until the forces of his... <laughs>